What's up guys? So how do you know if the iPad Pro or an iPad Pro only workflow is right for you? Well, I've done a ton of research and it's come down to four key questions that you're gonna have to answer. Yes, I wish it was five just so that it would sound better. Answer these five questions, but I'm not about to make up a useless one just so we can say answer these five questions. So before we get started, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, click the bell so that you get a notification on your phone when I drop new videos as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show. Also guys, before we get started, we're giving away a pair of AirPods second generation at 10,000 subscribers. So if you would like to win these, you gotta be a subscriber and get other people to subscribe as well because the quicker we get to that 10,000 mark, the faster the winner will be announced and uh, one lucky winner will get a pair of AirPods second generation. So let's get into the video. Okay, so as many of you guys know, back when Apple released the M1 iPad Pro, I was all for it, excited to get my hands on the power the M1 could deliver and really see some performance boosts in my workflow using it with iOS um, as it was, but also looking forward to the things coming in WWDC 2021. And then pretty much nothing came at WWDC 2021 in terms of professional apps. Um, there was a slight small upgrade to the file system. Um, not much with multitasking either. So looking at the iPad and iPad Pro as they are now, how do you know if you're ready to move on from Mac or PC to an iPad only workflow? And if you hear birds chirping in the background, I've got the window open, the weather's beautiful out there. So that's just a part of the video. The first question you're gonna need to ask is, do you like iOS? And I mean, do you really like iOS? Um, Mac OS and iOS, yes, they are starting to come together in terms Terms of functionality and even aesthetic, but they are two very different operating systems. Uh, Mac OS was designed for the Mac and has gone through several different iterations, uh, while iOS was designed from the ground up to work with multi-touch. And although peripheral support is in full swing with it supporting keyboard and mouse now, uh, it's still very much a touch interface. And so what you're gonna have to ask yourself is, can you use touch primarily? Um, if you're doing an iPad only workflow, you basically got iPhone and iPad. So everything you do is is going to be there, your file management, okay? So that's one of the biggest things, um, transferring of files via AirDrop. Now, thankfully, everybody's got a taste of what it's like to use iOS because most people have used an iPhone in their life and are used to the operating system there. And if you know the basics, it translates very well to the iPad. You'll just have to learn a few features like multitasking um, in order to get a good grasp on what you'll be able to do as far as workflow in iOS. Okay, the second most important thing that you're gonna have to ask yourself before before moving to an iPad only workflow, and this one seems obvious, but you really do have to consider it. What do you do? What's your job? What's your use case? Everybody is different, and a photographer is going to use it differently from a salesman, from a writer, etc. And while a lot of these work types and use cases can be well suited and adapted to iPad, uh, it's going to work very differently for an artist. It would work fantastic for somebody like that, whereas it might work not so well for somebody like a programmer, somebody using Xcode or something like that. Now tied very closely to this question is, what kind of websites do you use? Um, are they heavy in flash? Like uh, some websites aren't fully functional on iOS, even using the show desktop mode versus the mobile version. Uh, things like YouTube Studio, um, they it's gotten better, but I've had some issues from time to time using full desktop YouTube Studio for my YouTube channel on iPad. But often people, you don't work alone, you work with coworkers, other people. And so another question you're gonna have to ask yourself that's tied into what do you do is what do your coworkers do and what do they use? If you're collaborating with them, are the, the two workflows compatible I have a perfect example. I was recording the Appleosophy podcast with Bram Shank and Will Sigman, and I was on my iPad only workflow at the time, and they were recording, I think it was, they were trying to record a Zoom call or they had a special link that you were to follow and you had to be on desktop or laptop in order to access that certain application. So there was a workflow issue there. There was a disconnect that had to be resolved obviously before we could get to work on our collaboration. Okay, now the third most important thing when considering iPad Pro only workflow. Uh, and this is, I say it's number three, but really psychologically, it's probably the most important thing. And this is, are you willing and able to learn different 
pro apps. Now, I know the big thing about WWDC, we were expecting to get pro apps like Logic Pro and DaVinci or Premiere or, you know, Pixelmator Pro, all these different pro apps that we were supposed to get. And uh, Jonathan Morrison made a video and he makes a good point that there are applications you could consider pro on the iPad already. There are apps like LumaFusion for video editing, an app that I've used for years, um, and pretty much every video you've seen on this channel from the day that the M1 iPad arrived until the day that I returned it was completely edited in LumaFusion. Uh, and there are other apps like Procreate and the like, but the reason that I kind of disagree with the sentiment Jonathan had there is because for me, at least personally, I consider a pro app to be a software that can do anything that you needed to do in that given field. And something that's always held Lumen, Luma Fusion back for me is that certain cameras that I shoot with shoot in video file codecs, video file types that are compatible with iOS and therefore Luma Fusion can't read them either. So if I'm recording raw on a Black Magic, um, you know, Luma Fusion won't read it. And even though Final Cut won't read that file either, there are other video file types that I can record in like ProRes and the like that Final Cut can read. And so even though I may not be able to shoot raw in that camera, I can get some footage out of it. While iOS can't read ProRes or any other file type that the Blackmagic camera can read. And so I was crippled there in terms of my production ability uh, by LumaFusion and really iOS. So again, I agree mostly with Jonathan, but not entirely. And again, this is by your use case so some of you guys aren't even video editors so if you've got an application that does everything that the desktop version uh does then yeah it is a pro app i totally agree with that and then finally guys number four is what are your io and hardware needs okay now there are a ton of usb c and even thunderbolt accessories that are now compatible with the m1 ipad ipad pro and stuff where you can plug in external displays that's a whole that's a whole nother discussion. Uh, USB-C drives, SSDs, SD cards, etc. cetera. Uh, but one thing that you're gonna have to deal with is dongles. And with the iPad, one thing that you love about it is that it's so portable. This is upside down, that it's so portable. And uh, you know, you can just bring it anywhere. And when you're dragging around dongles and stuff, it kind of defeats the purpose in, in a way. And even though Mac and iPad are very close now, are getting closer in terms of IO, the Mac still does have one extra USB-C slash Thunderbolt port, and uh, it has a headphone jack. Yeah, I'm still a little salty that all the iPad Pro since 2018 have had no headphone jack. That's like the USB-C equivalent of an audio jack. It is on every single audio device for the most part, whether professional or consumer grade. It's just you need a dedicated audio jack. And that's something to really consider. If you're an audiophile and you like having the uh, headphone jack and you don't want to buy a whole bunch of adapters to convert uh, to USB-C, that's something to consider. Also, if you're using that one USB-C port for other things, dongles and the like, uh, you, you're screwed in terms of audio or even having a second USB-C or Thunderbolt port uh, as where the MacBook Pros and obviously the desktop computers have all that. So folks, again, you really want to think long and hard about all four of these things I just listed before even considering going all iPad in the workflow. Me personally, I love versatility. You can kind of see it in everything that I use. I love the Mac mini over the iMac because of versatility, swapping out, you know, the display and speakers, etc. I like the iPad Pro because of versatility. I can put it in a laptop case. I could put it on a desk and plug it into a monitor or I could use it as a tablet. Um, versatility and flexibility is a huge thing for me as a pro when it comes to video editing, when it also comes to music production and those types of things. Um, that's kind of my MO. So depending not only on your use case, but the compatibility with your coworkers and other people you may collaborate with, um, those are things that you'll have to think about before considering going M1 iPad Pro or iPad Pro only. Right now, once again, I'm rocking the third generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro and the M1 Mac Mini. And I love the setup. It's great. It gives me everything that I need. Now, if you thought this video was helpful and you want other people to also know what they're getting into before going iPad only, uh, hit the like button. It tells the algorithm that this video is helpful and it will send it out 
uh, to more people. Also, just, you know, like the video if you like the video. Subscribe and click the bell so you get a notification on your phone when I drop new videos as we cover your favorite tech and video games. Uh, hopefully we'll get some news, some announcements. There were some things that I was hoping, kind of waiting on in terms of the Apple TV to try some Apple gaming out. There are tons of games on Apple Arcade and I have that too. So if you're interested in that, leave me a comment down below. We'll do a little gaming because uh, I know that is something I say all the time. Gaming and tech, your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show.